Hi there, welcome to Lily Tree. Today we're making this wire wrap pendant. So let's get wrapping. For this project, we're using 1mm diameter copper wire, which is 18 gauge, 0.4mm diameter copper wire, which is 26 gauge, some small beads, a minor 2mm diameter agates, and then a jump ring and chain to hang it from. And then the tools we're using are round nose pliers, chain or flat nose pliers, wire cutters, and a hammer and block. To make the frame, we're using 20 centimetres of the 1mm or 18 gauge wire, and we want to fold it in half. I know one of these wires can be shorter than the other, so we can offset that slightly. And then we're just going to bend that wire. And close it up so we've got quite a sharp fold. And then we can hold the wire at that fold and start shaping those two halves. I've got the longer wire at the back. I'm just going to create a gentle curve on that. And then with the shorter wire, I want a bit more of a curve so that sits outside of the other one. And we don't need to worry too much about that shape at the moment. We can refine it later. We'll just get a nice curve on both of those wires. And I think I'll just move those wires apart slightly at the bend. Then we can start bending the top of the pendant. We'll take that longer wire and start bending it back the other way. We're going to curve this right the way over the top of the pendant and back around in a large loop until it crosses itself. And then with the other wire, I just create a bit more of a bend at the bottom there. And then we want to create a smaller loop at the top. So it will fit inside that first loop and meet it as it comes back down the side. And then those wires are going to part a bit as they cross themselves. And we can use a straight line to check its symmetry. I've placed that beginning bend and the top bit of the curve on the line and I want that to look balanced. And we can finesse those curves until we're happy with the shape. And then I want to hammer the wires. I don't want to hammer them whilst they're crossed, so I've just bent the ends of those wires upwards. This just gives me access to the back wires. And we can avoid that bit where they're crossing at the bottom, but just hammer those wires up to the top of the pendant. Now you can make this pendant without hammering the wires, but there are two reasons for hammering. One is to work hard on the wires, which helps make the shape more solid and helps provide a bit of resistance when you're wrapping the wires. And then it also squares the wire off a little bit, which helps the wrapping wire to grip when we'll be adding the beads later. So once we've hammered those back wires up to the top, we can fold the wire ends back down again. We might just need to reshape them and make sure they're sitting where we want them. And then we can hammer the top part of the pendant. Again, we're avoiding where the wires cross each other. And that provides us with our frame and we're ready to start wrapping the wire and adding the beads. 
To wrap the pendant, we need about a metre of the 0.4 or 26 gauge wire. And I'm going to be starting from one end and working my way around. So I'll be starting at the bottom of the pendant. If you prefer to do the weaving first and start here on the pendant, you need to leave a tail of about 35 centimetres or so. And then you can use that to wrap back down and put the beads on afterwards. But I'm going to start where we folded the wire and just pop the end of that weaving wire through the frame and then wrap around just that outer wire. And we're just going to keep threading that weaving wire through and wrapping around the outer wire to create a coil. And we can make sure that end of the wire is nice and tight and push it to the bottom of the pendant. Now I want five beads down this part of the pendant. So my last one will be about there. So I want to wrap this outer wire up to that point. I think that's about where I want the beads to start. So we can just bend that weaving wire slightly and that'll help sit the bead where we want it. Then we'll thread on one of our beads and position it so it's sitting just outside that frame wire. Then we're going to hold it in place and take that weaving wire through the frame to continue wrapping as we did before. And this is where we want the bead to sit, but it's useful just to hold it in place whilst we make the next few wraps. And I'm going to have a total of three wraps between the beads. So then we can bend that weaving wire again and add the next bead. We'll sit that into position. Hold it against the frame. and then wrap that frame another three times. And we'll just continue adding beads in this way up to where the wires cross over the front. So we can just get that last bead into position and then wrap around the frame. And then to help those beads stay in position, we can use our flat nose pliers or chain nose pliers just to clamp gently over those wraps. Make sure they're sitting tightly to that frame wire. And then we're going to continue wrapping around that frame wire just to create a coil around the frame wire right the way around that inner curve. And we want those front ends of the wire to stay free so we can just move them forward slightly to get them out of the way. And then just continue wrapping a coil on that one wire. And as we get around to the other side of the pendant, that free end of the wire makes it a bit easier. And we're just going to coil up to where those two wires meet. And 
And then we're going to put corset weave on the two wires. So we'll just make sure they're in the position where we want them. Make sure those curves are just how we want them to be. And then we'll take that weaving wire down between the two frame wires. And then wrap around that outer wire. Twice. We'll then come down between the wires again. Make sure that's nice and tight. And wrap just that inner wire twice. And we'll continue wrapping these wires and moving between them to create the corset weave. And we can trim off that beginning end of the weaving wire. And as you might notice, that outer frame wire is just slightly longer than the inner wire. So we can add extra wraps to the outer wire so that the weave on both wires keep up with each other. I've added three there on that outer wire. And keep to two wraps on that inner wire. Now, if you want to know more about weaving around a curve, I've got a free PDF that goes into more details. You can grab your copy of that by following the link in the description below. And I think because these curves are quite gentle, I might need to alternate between putting three on there and putting two on. Now, once we get to where those wires are crossing the frame at the back, we can attach the two together by taking our weaving wire down through the frame. Make sure those top wires are sitting where we want them. And then taking that weaving wire around the frame wire at the back. And then pulling it quite tightly so it locks into those previous wraps. And then continue that weave on the front wires. So I've attached the front and the back together on that inner wire and I'll do the same for the outer wire as well. Taking that weaving wire through the frame around that back wire and then continue that corset weave at the front. And we want to weave up to where those front wires cross that outer wire at the back. And we're going to finish that corset weave on that top wire, the inner curve wire. And then we're going to take that weaving wire down through the frame and start wrapping up that wire that forms the outer curve at the top of the pendant. I'll just put a few wraps on here to secure it. But then I think I'll deal with those frame wire ends before I get any further. We're just going to end these in two little loops. So we can take our round nose pliers, just start wrapping that wire around, and then create a small loop so it will sit just outside that frame wire. We can then trim off the excess wire. Just make sure we've got a full loop there and that wire sitting where we want it. And then we'll do exactly the same for the other wire. And you'll see I've got both of my loops facing downwards. I just think the design looked better that way. So I'll create that loop with the round nose pliers. 
trim off the excess wire. And then make sure that loop's just sitting where we want it to be. And now we can go back to our weaving wire and add some more beads to the top of the pendant. So I'm doing this in exactly the same way as I did before by curving the wire, adding the bead. And then continuing the wraps on that frame. I've added three beads and I'm just finishing this with five wraps on the frame. You can put more or less wraps on there, but I'd recommend not having less than three, just so it holds securely. We can then trim the rest of that weaving wire off. Make sure the end's tight to the frame. And those wraps are nice and tight. Then we can add a chain with a jump ring. And that's our pendant finished. If you enjoyed this video, why not head to this playlist for more like it? Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.